Hi, this is going to be a quick video about my meeting with a Danae medicine man yesterday in, uh, in Arizona at the Navajo Nation. Um, I, uh, I'm going to blog a really long, really long blog about the entire day because it didn't end well. But, uh, but the medicine man part was really fascinating and cool. So I'm just going to focus on that right now. Um, so anyway, my new, and I'm going to use just their initials to protect their identity. So, um, my new, uh, Danae friend, Kay, is the one who brought me to meet the medicine man named W. So, uh, I'm rambling. I just lost my train of thought. Well, actually, what I'm noticing today because of what happened yesterday is I'm really tired. I just, like, want to sleep for three years today. And when I took my walk a little while ago, I kept feeling, and I haven't had this happen in a long time, but I, I'm, like, barely 5'2", but I felt like I was about 5'10". As I looked down on the trail, I felt like I was slightly above my body a lot this morning. Um, so definitely things happened yesterday. But uh, so anyway, so on the way to meet with W, uh, the medicine man, Kay gave me some pointers about what to do and not do and stuff when I arrived because I have no clue. And um told me a little bit about what to expect, but didn't tell me a lot so that he, that things could just unfold. So, uh, uh, and I brought some stuff with me for him. So I brought, uh, regular tobacco, um, green cedar. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. Green cedar, uh, bluebird flower, uh, and water because water is such an issue out there. So, um, so I brought those things too, and then uh, so we uh, we were brought into the house by a guy who I'm going to assume was his son, and and I went into the back uh, back of the house room. Uh, when I walked in, it was full of smoke. <laughs> so because he had, I want to use the term cauldron. I don't know what to call it, but he had like a cauldron, a stone cauldron on the floor in the middle of the room that he was burning. Um, uh, special items. I don't even know what they were actually because it was all like it was full of ashes. So it was just like to me it just looked like a lot of ashes, but it was something else. Um so the room had a lot of smoke in it, but when I first walked in, uh, very strong spiritual energy. I mean, it was palpable that this room contained a lot. And uh so I gave them their gifts, we greeted and things like that and talked for a little bit. And then um, he, uh, and then, so, so besides what he was burning, and, and then he would feed the fire occasionally during the whole uh, prayers and ceremony that he did. He would occasionally feed it with some more um, of uh, the smudging type stuff that he was using. Um, he also had a well, good side, I don't know about that big crystal. Um, I, a feather that I think was a hawk feather, or a couple of them, actually more than one, and, um, some other, uh, talismans and things that meant things that I don't know, um, and I'm blanking on right now. So, he asked me why I was there, and initially the reason was my 2006 dream about Taos that I had when I was living in the Denver area. So I told him the dream, and the real short story is, uh, in the dream, it was not just a dream, it was clearly an astral event. Uh, I was in a van driving south towards New Mexico, and uh, I got stuck in deep mud, struggled to get the vehicle out of the mud, uh, got it out, and then continued on, arrived in Taos, uh, it was nighttime, and there was these three Native American ladies around a fire, and they invited me to join them. I did, and I mentioned my name's Etheria, and one of them said, uh, we've either heard about you or read about you. Grandmother wants to talk to you. And then, boom, I was awake. And so for all these years, you know, I never, I, the stream's been just haunting me. So who's grandmother? What's going on? So... That's the main reason I came to the medicine man yesterday. 
Um, but I also have this horrific headache all the time uh, for over 27 and a half years from three different neck injuries. The most recent one in 2018 uh, also da uh, split open my head. And I've been killed by my neck in numerous lives. I've been uh, beheaded, hung, um, strangled, uh, a spear in the neck. Uh, so it's just, so there's trauma held in here along with physical damage. So I brought that up too, because why not? So, so it, to start, he asked me for my name and I go, well, the legal one or the one I use? So he wanted both. So he had me speak my names. And then he went into the prayers and stuff. Uh, while he was doing the, the prayers and the ceremonial aspect, he only spoke uh, in Navajo, which, of course, I don't understand. It's a very complex language. Thank, thank God my friend Kay was there to translate certain things. Um, and then, uh, so, let's see, where were we? Okay, so he started it all. Uh, oh, so quite a bit was going on uh, when I didn't know it was, you know, I didn't understand what was going on. But then um, he's paused for a bit. Kay translated and told me the upsetting news. I didn't want to hear this. I'm so like, huh? Ah. Um, because, you know, I, I love Taos. Um, I will admit that the energy there isn't the same as it used to be. The first time I was ever there in uh, 1998 it was just overwhelmingly fabulous and uh, just no question but the past few few years it just doesn't quite feel the same I wouldn't say it's negative but it doesn't feel the same to me um, although I have met people who do not like the energy there at all uh, they they hate it so you know to each their own I guess but anyway so I got some news it wasn't thrilling Basically, the dream was not as positive as I was hoping or assuming. So he said that the three women uh, were actually ancestors of mine, and two of them were fine, but there was one, uh, probably, you know, the one that said, grandmother wants to talk to you kind of a thing. Um, for, I don't know how else to word it other than to say she was into the dark arts and was trying to pull me and kind of trick me, kind of like a trickster-ish thing, uh, pull me in that direction. And that's why I was quickly pulled out of it and uh, woke up because, uh, you know, either my higher self or a main spirit guide um, pulled me out to uh, protect me. So it was upsetting to hear that. Um, oh, and I should mention, by the way, during this entire, uh, the entire time I was in there meeting with the medicine man, clairvoyantly, I clearly, I saw, uh, I, one of my guys is named White Feather. He was standing behind me and he had both hands on my shoulders the entire time. He was wearing this glorious headdress. It was just the stunning headdress. I mean, they're always pretty, but it was, you know, all white feathers and then with some other decorative stuff in it. Um, and he was looking very handsome, I have to say. He was looking, he was looking his best. But so he was there the whole time standing behind me. So I, you know, he was definitely involved in arranging this whole meeting. Um, oh, and then, uh, so Kenny, uh, in the translating, uh, oh, I just gave his name. Whoops. K, um, as he was translating, uh, said, showed me in, because there was a lot of ashes in the cauldron. So uh, there were these three very specific, though, like, in, you know, lumps up of the stuff. Like, you know, um, kind of like when you see those people set those rocks on top of each other to mark places. It was kind of like that. It was very three, you know, definite things. And he pointed out that those were symbolic of the three women in the dream. And I could see them. There was no denying it. They were like, whoa. I'm like, yeah, I see. There's definitely those three forms in the ashes. So that was clear. Um, and then, I'm losing my train of thought. 
Hold on. I'm having a hard time staying in my body, actually. A lot. Um... Why am I thinking? Oh, okay. So there was that. And then, uh, so that's why the dream ended when it did. It was a protective thing. And then he said, um, currently there are two women in Taos, uh, that don't, that, uh, don't mean well for me. Let's put it that way. So he did uh, some major protection of me to shield me from them and their energy. That was upsetting, too. Um, but it's better to know than not know. Um, and I have, I might know who they are, actually. I don't, I have suspicions. But, um, but anyway, he did a major shielding of me of anything like that. And then, um, and then, uh, the, so then he, he did all, okay, that was the end of that part. And then he was working on my pain. So he did, um, um, some of the physical stuff he did to me, um, you know, I, I can't really tell you. Um, but he did do something with, um, here, here, and then in my occipital area. And this is where the headache starts from. It starts in the back because of the top of my neck damage. So he did some things to my head there. Um, he did some other things to me uh, to protect and cleanse anything that's attached to me that should not be there. Um, I feel very shielded, actually, right now. But I'm just having a hard time. I just keep going, popping up. I can feel it, and I'm feeling like a little spacey. And I'm not, and, uh, and to be honest, because I don't think I was totally back, in my body after this powerful um, prayer ceremony, uh, that may be part of what happened on driving home that I blogged about. But although most of it was just not my fault, well, well the car part was not my fault at all. But um, the speeding was my fault. Um, and uh, I'm just like, oh God. Forget so he did this. Oh, he told me uh, I am not to shake hands with anybody for 24 hours, which is fine. I don't like to touch people. I don't want to be touched. I don't like to touch. Just stay back. <laughs> so, so that's fine. Although I did end up hugging my friend when as I was leaving, the hugging was allowed. And because he took part in the prayer ceremony, he, you know, he kind of was, uh, he was safe. But, um, I think that's the main part of it and I will say as we were leaving his house um I felt lighter I because my friend was asking me he says how do you feel and I go I just it was hard to describe it I go I just I feel lighter and um so it's, it's so anyway so he I was told that it's uh, you know it's not I would love for like my pain to just be magically gone today but the reality is uh you know, my whole life and my, everything about me and who I am is going to start shifting. He says it'll be, you know, he says you'll notice subtle shifts as the weeks go on. And I can, like today, um, I haven't, I just, I just feel different today. And, oh, and during my walk where I kept popping out of my body, uh, I saw numerous signs and I, uh, well, first of all, walking past somebody's car here and I have not ever noticed this in their windshield before but they had a huge hawk feather hanging in their window and I, I it just jumped out at me and I saw a whole bunch of butterflies today and mostly white ones which we don't have a lot of the white ones here uh white butterflies for a long time have been signs from spirit for me so um I know you know I know that's a definite little yep you know my little unseen friend saying hello um, I don't want this to go on too long. I'm forgetting, I'm forgetting, I know I'm forgetting important stuff. But anyway, I'm going to blog about the details of the day. Some of it was funny yesterday, but I am going to say driving on I-40, uh, awful, awful, awful. Avoid that highway if you can. So uh, anyway, that's it. And this has gone on too long. So have a good uh, rest of your Sunday. And uh, I look forward to seeing what, going to be changing the next few weeks. So anyway, take care. Bye.